Well, George Santos could now be spending his final night as an elected representative in the United States Congress. We are just hours away now from a House vote to expel the embattled and indicted congressman from New York. This morning, Santos told reporters he's not giving up. If I leave, they win. If I leave, the bullies take place. This is bullying. Santos later took to the fight, uh, took the fight to the House floor, deflecting blame off himself and onto his colleagues. It, it is a predetermined necessity for some members in this body to engage in this smear campaign to destroy me. With more on the impending vote to expel Santos from Congress tomorrow, we are joined by Karen Finney, former communications director for the Democratic National Committee. Also joining us tonight is Republican strategist Alice Stewart, who also served as communications director for Ted Cruz. All right, so before we jump in, I want to just go over and remind our viewers what this ethics report released earlier uh, this, uh, this month revealed, shall we? So it revealed uh, uh, misuse of campaign funds for vacation, spa and Botox treatments, even OnlyFans accounts, which is essentially a porn site. Uh, so it alleges he was using campaign funds for that. What are the chances, Karen, uh, <laughs> that he is still a member of Congress after tomorrow? It seems highly unlikely, I will tell you. And it was interesting today, one of the things we heard uh, members of Congress saying, the, those who were trying to speak in, uh, in support of him, was, you know, the people should be able to decide. Well, Marist had a poll recently that said 75 percent of New Yorkers 83% of Long Island residents and about 68% of the GOP in New York think he should step down. And as you recall, when we first learned last fall that he had, you know, completely lied and misled people about his resume, I mean, that seems like nothing compared to the rest of it at this point. Even then, people thought he should step down. So, you know, the pressure is on for the Republican Party, I think, to show that ethics actually matters. Right. And and look, Republicans, I mean, they're, they're in agreement. He is a serial liar. No one is denying that. But there are some Republicans that we've heard from that are claiming, you know, that they're concerned about the precedent that this was set, expelling someone from Congress who has not at this point been convicted of a crime. Alice, how much do you think it is uh, the reluctance to expel him is that? establishing that precedent versus the fact they need his vote because there's such a slim margin. Look, there's a, an argument to be made that he is a reliable vote, and for the Republicans that are only thinking about this through the political lens, they would rather keep him and let the voters vote him out of office. He's not running for re-election, but when his, his time is up. Look, here's what happens. When we talk about luxury vacations and designer clothing, this is what happens when you have a caviar dreams on a congressional salary. It turns into a nightmare, and this is of his own doing. And what I'm hearing from Republicans, look, this is not a matter of a, him having his due process because he had the opportunity to answer these questions and put forth information before the Ethics Committee. He did not do so. And he had the opportunity to... Uh, withdraw and step down, as many have asked him, he's not doing so. So expulsion is the only answer. And look, this is not a matter of the precedent of someone who has never been, not been convicted of being expelled from Congress. Look, this is about there are conduct and standard of behavior amongst members of Congress. He has not met that. And rational Republicans that I've been speaking with saying he is a disgrace, not just to the Republican Party, but to politics, to, con to Congress, and also to this country with his behavior. And what he did today as he spoke out there on, on the floor did not do him any favors. He lost votes. But, you know, I think the question is for the Republican Party, given all that baggage and the baggage that they've been dealing with with Kevin McCarthy and the chaos, will they actually be able to show they can come together and say, okay, enough is enough. I, you know, I think it's a, it's a big risk for well, them. You bring up Kevin McCarthy. I want to yeah. talk about, a little bit about <laughs> Kevin McCarthy because the Washington Post is detailing this phone call uh, that he apparently had with Donald Trump shortly after McCarthy was removed as Speaker in the House in October. The Post reporting that when McCarthy asked why the former president did not ex help him keep the speakership, Trump blasted McCarthy for not expunging his impeachments and for not endorsing his 2024 campaign. McCarthy then reportedly told the former president F you. Uh, and I spoke to a source who did confirm that McCarthy felt very sort of free and emboldened to to tell it straight to Trump what he was feeling um, now that he has been ousted 
What do you make of this? Uh, given all that Kevin McCarthy has done to support Donald Trump and going down there to Mar-a-Lago when he supposedly couldn't eat after, you know, he, he lost, um, Donald Trump certainly should have had us back. This is a classic case of loyalty with Donald Trump is a one-way street. McCarthy was loyal to Trump. He did not return the favor. He encouraged uh, Matt Gates to oust him from uh, being speaker, and he didn't do anything to help him uh, when the votes were mounting up against him. And I don't blame McCarthy. I would have said dropped the F-bomb and a lot more. But his campaign, I spoke with someone from his team, said he, he says he didn't say that. He says they actually have a good relationship. They work well together. They talk quite often. They've agreed and disagreed in the past, and they have a good relationship. But, you know, but it's much better to talk about the yeah. F-bomb than, than <laughs> kumbaya. But here's what was also interesting in that piece. It talked about how people were saying Kevin McCarthy's rationale for why he hadn't endorsed, like that was one of the issues Trump had, Concerns about fundraising, concerns about protecting vulnerable members. So that also, I think that's a very important point that we should underscore. I know the F-bomb is exciting, but that tells you the Republican Party knows that with Trump on the ticket, they have a problem raising the money and the funds that they're going to need to compete in some of these House races, probably in Senate races as well. Meanwhile, Democratic fundraising is going very well. So I thought that was a very telling part of this story, that there were very real concerns that Kevin McCarthy had. All right, Karen Finney, Alice Stewart, thanks, as always, for your wonderful analysis. Coming up, did Donald Trump's own attorney provide testimony that could get him convicted?